Good morning everyone. Buenos dias a todos y todas. What a great way to spend Labor Day. Right? Feeling the people power, feeling the love, feeling the, all the things that you care for and that you're here supporting. Qué cosa más bonita empezar el día del trabajo así, sintiendo todo el amor, todo el cariño y lo que les importa y que por eso están aquí apoyando. There's a beautiful sign that there says, what would Jesus say if he saw Mercy Hospital pay? Hashtag union. Oh. Ah, hay un símbolo, una pancarta que dice ¿Qué diría Jesús si mira cuánto paga el hospital Mercy? Hashtag union. Huelga, aumenten el pago, vivamos mejor. Democrat Socialists of America. <laughs> Fight for 15. Yeah. Iowa on a strike. Hospital Workers United. Yeah. Safe staffing saves lives. Hashtag union, hashtag Labor Day. Iowa plays for nurses to live. Did you know that Iowa is number 50 on pay for nurses? Ooh, that's not right. We have to change that, right? I'm going to now introduce you to Mike Dellinger. He's a fast food worker and he's going to show and share why he's here, here today. All right. Hi, my name is Mike Dellinger. I work at Burger King. I'm 54 years old. And I only make eight twenty-five an hour. And I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for my grandkids so they can make it in this world. And I can't get welfare because they say I make too much. I can't get no insurance. I got high blood pressure. They send me home from work because I about pass out. But I still go every day. I miss a day. And they want to pay me like dirt. I mean... And we all need to raise. I mean, because you figure if, if you make $800 a month, your rent is $750 a month. That only leaves you $50 to live on, and you can't live on that. There ain't no way. I can't even go see my grandkids on the weekends because I don't have no gas to go see them. So I'm here to fight for 15 in the union. We all need it. Thank you. This isn't very good. I'm not a natural public speaker. <laughs> Sorry. Better? Better. Okay. Uh, so I am a CNA at Mercy. We, I work in cath lab recovery, which is where people go after they have heart attacks. <laughs> and I make $13 an hour. <laughs> I started at 11.75 though, so progress. <laughs> uh, but the reason I'm mostly here is because my fiance, who works at Walmart, makes more than me. And we barely make it by together. <laughs> so I think $15 is important to me, but it's more important to other people. I have a sign here that says moms need more money. <laughs> How many moms work at Mercy? <laughs> Union too because yeah. look at the staffing ratios look at how many people are taking care of how many patients it's, it's impossible <laughs> it's unsafe it's right. we need a voice so we can look out for our patients better I think anybody in healthcare can tell you we just want what's best for our patients and we want to get by yep. so because it means everything, so thank you! Yeah. Thank you, Amy. You said you're not a public speaker, but you even know how to get the mic. That's even better, so thank you. <laughs> so, another reason why we're here is to support unions, right? And so we're going to hear from Terry and Candy from SEIU. Yeah. 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 Good morning, Des Moines! Yeah. and I'm here from Deaconess in Spokane, Washington. I'm a health unit coordinator, clerical support in an inpatient environment. And my name is Terry Sterling and I am a medical assistant, certified medical assistant at Kaiser Permanente. And I 
am just overwhelmed, honestly. And we are proud members of SEIU 1199 North yeah, Carolina. Baby, yeah. Yeah. And we're here to support our health care workers in Iowa to get a union, to get the pay yeah. and the recognition that you deserve for the care that you give this community. Yes! We want to let you know that we are here with you. And we are not going anywhere until you get what is owed to you. We are not going. We will come back for every action that you have. We will come back for every event, every fight. We are here with you to bring you into a livable wage. And as a 1199 member, executive board member, you best believe that when we come, we come strong. So when you vote, you vote for that union because that's going to get you everything that you are due. You work too hard to not get proper pay, education. You deserve it. It is owed to you, and it's about time that they pay. It's a shame that you have health care workers in a community this size in the core and the heartland of our country that don't have appropriate medical coverage. It's a shame that you're working for employers that are taking you to collections for medical bills that you can't pay because they are paying you squat. So, vote for that union in your hospital. That is the way you're going to change the world. You are the people that we see right now, and it's going to spread like wildfire. So vote for a union in your hospital. Vote. Vote for it. Stand up. Speak up. Speak out. Let them know. Don't be afraid to show your faces. Yeah, there's going to be a few that might have job problems, but you know what? It's so worth it when we're setting forth the path. We want to make it a livable wage. Let's vote for 15. Yeah! Let's get it passed. Thank you. Thank you. Here in Iowa, we had some cities that passed a minimum wage that was raised, right? But then what happened? They took it away. So we have to organize, we have to work together, and so we're, we're going to fight back and we're going to make sure that we elect people that support the Fight for 15, that support unions, and we're going to hold them accountable. And so we're going to hear from Pete D'Alessandro, he's a candidate for Congressional District 3, and we're going to give them two minutes. Thank you. Yeah, great. I'll go quick. i got two minutes. I'll go quick. First of all, let me say how humbled I am to be out here with all of you, with all of you uh, incredible grassroots organizers, and all of you just amazing social justice champions. Thank you for allowing me to do this. I am the son of a Teamster diaper man. Now, I see some young people out there that might not remember what that is. My dad literally picked up rich people's diapers. My dad literally picked up rich people's diapers threw them in the back of his truck, brought them back to the plant, brought the clean ones back, and restarted that every day. He used to say he was the only guy that worked in the Midwest who enjoyed the winters over the summers because the truck smelled a little better. I will say this. Because of that union contract, I was able to grow up with a in, in dignity in a great neighborhood with great schools with other people around me in that same situation. So the fight for 15 which I will be very clear about. This discussion starts at $15 an hour. It is not... This discussion is not nuanced. It's not what we're going to get to. It's not indexed. It starts at 15 and then after we get 15 then we're going to make sure that every person in this country has an easier chance and the proper chance to organize in a union because if we don't do that, if we don't do that, They'll, they'll take it away. We've seen that up there. They'll take it away. So, that's right. So, in that, in that regard, I will travel throughout this district, and the one thing I will say clearly is the discussion starts at 15. If you're not starting the discussion there, you're not having a discussion with me. And let me, let me finish with this. I think it's very appropriate on this day with this incredible group of people. Cesar Chavez used to say, it, is, it was never about 
the lettuce. It was always about the people. This is a social justice issue. It is not an economic issue. It is about the people. We will make it. We will make it happen. We will make fifteen dollars an hour a reality. We will make the will of the people the law of this land. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pete. Now we're going to listen from Mike Carberry. Uh, he's Con Johnston County Supervisor and he's been a supporter, so welcome, Mike. Thank you, Alejandro. Wow, what a crowd. It's great to be here. Um, I've got two other Labor Day events to get to, one in Cedar Rapids and one in the People's Republic of Johnson County, So, but I couldn't be more proud to stand here with you all, uh, the workers of the, of the area. So I was elected county supervisor to protect the health, the welfare of the citizens of Johnson County. And um, so how do you protect the welfare of your citizens and the workers? One of the ways you do that is you raise their wages. That's right. You build strong unions and you rebuild the middle class. And that's why we're here today on Labor Day is to talk about all three of those things. So, as we all know, nobody can survive on 725 and that we need to raise the wage. And that's why when I got elected uh, to county supervisor in Johnson County just two and a half years ago, th the first thing I did was to uh, try to raise the minimum wage in Johnson County. Yeah. I ran on that. Uh, but, and, and we got it done. We raised it to 1010 over a lot of opposition. The problem was after we instituted it, we really pissed a bunch of people off here at the state capitol. And, and guess what? They took it away. And that ain't right. So, what do we need to do about that? Well, yeah, stand up and fight back. We need to throw the bums out. <laughs> and so, one of the things we need to do is that we need to replace the GOP with uh, people that uh, are not the GOP. So that, I, I'm an elected Democratic official, so I'm gonna encourage you to put Democrats in their place. But, not all Democrats are cut from the same cloth. You know, that's right, we've got your corporate Democrats, we've got your centrist Democrats, we've got your Wall Street Democrats, but what we really need is some bold, progressive Democrats. We need some goddamn liberals in there. Yeah. I know you're not supposed to say cuss words around Polk County or you won't be asked to speak again, so. <laughs> I don't give a damn. And we don't get offended by cuss words. We get offended by workers not getting a living wage. We get offended by racism, by sexism, by homophobia, right? So now we're gonna hear from Kathy Glasson. Okay, we're gonna have somebody introduce her. Oh, Sandy Dorn is gonna introduce her. Hi. Good morning. Uh, my name's Sandy Deering. I just worked a 12-hour shift, so I apologize. Just, just uh, tired here. Okay. My, my name's Sandy Deering. I've worked for the past 30 years at Unity Point. I'm a patient registration clerk. I've worked for 30 years at Broadlaw. Registered nurse at Broadlands, and I'm here here today. That's right, 30 years at two two jobs. Now, if if you work in healthcare in Des Moines, most of you probably work two jobs. If you're not working two jobs, you're either working a job or going to school to continue your education so you can make more money. Um, Iowa workers compensation comes in at 50th in this country dead last and we all know that we live it every day here in Des Moines Iowa however our cost of living is not 50th and we all know that too that's why we're working two jobs sometimes three going to school to try to increase our education wages thank you no one goes into the health care field to get rich and we all know that However, in many states, health care is the step into the middle class for families, but not here in Iowa. Here, we have to work multiple jobs with dangerously low staffing, dangerous to our patients and ourselves, and we all know that. That ain't right. 
This is why hospital workers from all over Iowa are joining hospital workers from across the Midwest to fight for the 15 minimum wage for all hospital workers and a union for all. How you doing out there? You look great. You look beautiful. My name is Kathy Glosson, and guess what? I'm running for governor! And you know, I believe that the number one job of elected officials is to improve the standard of living for workers and their families in the state of Iowa. And it all starts by raising wages. Because, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the only two ways that we make higher pay for workers in our state is by increasing the minimum wage and building strong unions, right? Well, let me tell you that Governor Kim Reynolds and the Republican legislature, if that was their number one job, how do you think they're doing so far? They have failed, and they failed miserably. And that's putting us all in trouble in our state. Unless you're Apple. Unless you're Apple. Good point. You know, what Kim Reynolds, Governor Kim Reynolds is doing just the opposite. She's making it harder for working people to get by in our state. And the reason she's done that is that she's, and how she's done it, is that she's lowered wages and she's gutted the ability for workers to join together in a union, driving down the standard of living for all of us. That's not right. And guess what? That's how they rig the economy. That's what they do. So Governor Reynolds and her corporate friends are doing great. But you know what the problem is? All the, they understand the problem. All the money, guess where all the money's going? It's going to the rich folks instead of going to the workers, the families, and the family farmers in our state that are struggling to get by. And when 381,000 Iowa households are paid so little that they're struggling to survive, we all pay the price. And the only way, the one shot we have at rebuilding our economy in this state is to raise <laughs> Sorry about that. I have a loud voice, and I guess the mic can't handle it. Uh, so, the one shot we have at rebuilding our economy for workers in our state is to raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour. <laughs> And let workers join unions again. That's right. Iowa needs unions. You know, in the city of Des Moines and cities across the Midwest, hospitals like this behind me are the new economy. They're the center of our economy. They're like the factories that we had in previous generations. And make no mistake, the hospital industry here in Des Moines is making some pretty big profits. Anybody want to guess how much? $236 million a year. And guess who? Guess what the CEO of Mercy Healthcare Network in Iowa makes every year? $900,000 a year! And that, you know what else? 70% of hospital workers in our state make less than $15 an hour. So just think about that. CEO, 900000 and the workers that deliver the patient care, clean the rooms, cook the food, and make these hospitals successful are making less than $15 an hour. Do you think that's right? No. Is that an economy that works for us? No. Is that a fair shot for workers? No. You know, private sector workers do some of the most difficult jobs, but some of the most important jobs in our society.
And it's workers like hospital workers, healthcare workers, fast food workers, and workers in other private sector jobs. They need unions. Yeah! And what I'm talking about is strong organization of workers that pool their bargaining power to make sure that everyone sees their fair share of the profits, not just those at the top. Yeah! And when we have strong unions, guess what? We raise the wage floor and we boost the purchasing power of working families in our communities. Yeah! That way we grow our economy and that way we raise the standard of living for all Iowans. You know, hospital workers in New York City, Seattle, and in the state of California formed their unions. You know what? They've won a better life, higher wages, and a better quality of life for themselves and their family. I ask you, why can't we do that in Iowa? Because I say we can, and I say it's time. What do you say? Because I will tell you, when I've traveled the state and I've been listening to Iowans, what I hear is that they're fed up. They're sick and tired of working two and three jobs to make ends meet. But what I also hear over and over again is they're ready to rise up. They're ready to rise up for bold progressive change in 2018. They don't want politicians giving them lip service anymore, and they sure as hell don't want a governor who takes her orders from billionaires and bosses and doesn't give a hoot about workers who haven't had a decent raise in years. They don't want half measures. They want big new ideas to turn our state around. They're ready to rise up for $15 an hour. They're ready to rise up to be in a union. They're ready to rise up for single-payer universal health care. They're ready. They're ready to rise up to limit the growth of corporate farms. We need clean water, safe communities, and strong public education. I'm standing with the fight for 15 because a nurse, I know how to risk my job, and I did it to organize with my fellow co-workers to form our union. And I know, I know brothers and sisters firsthand that the only way we can turn things around and create a better life is by sticking together in a union. Together, we can... <laughs> I'm blowing the mic again, sorry. Together we can win in 2018. We can take back our state if we rise up together for a bold, progressive future. That's what this Labor Day is about. That's what unions are about. I'm Kathy Glosson, and that's why I'm running for governor to take back our state. Happy Labor Day! Okay, thank you. I would invite you now to the level of your comfort to hold hands to the person next to you or to hug the person next to you. Los voy a invitar ahora, depende de qué tan cómodos se sientan, que tomen de la mano a la persona que está a la par o le den un abrazo. And what I want you to feel, lo que quiero que sientan, it's the people power. You all came here for a reason. Todos y todas vinieron por una razón. Entonces, you know, for me, praying is how I communicate with the divine. And praying could take many, many forms. One of my favorite forms of praying is marching and being with people like you all. So marching and demanding rights and respect for everyone is like a form of praying for me. So I would invite you to close your eyes for 30 seconds and just feel that desire to change things. Do you feel that desire to make things better? Feel that love, that, that deep 
place within you that that's why you came here. That's why on Labor Day, when a lot of people are on vacation doing something else, you are here standing for what is right. Because we're going to need this, this thing that is deep within us that sustains us, because it's going to be a fight for the long haul. And we need to stick together. So, I'm going to ask you, what do you want? And you said, union and 15. I'm going to do it three times, I'm going to close with that, okay? What do you want? Union and 15! Wait. <laughs> I, I think I came to the wrong event. <laughs> Dude, do you seriously believe that? Okay, let's try it again. What do you want? You can't What do you want? You can't What do you want? You What do you want? You can't Thank you everyone, let's keep fighting! <laughs> Okay, why are you here today? Uh, well, I'm a candidate for the governor's race here in Iowa, but it's Labor Day 2017 here in Des Moines in our capital, and I'm standing with a bunch of workers, citizens that are out here fighting for the minimum wage of $15 an hour and forming union in our state again. You know, our state is in a lot of trouble when we have 381,000 households struggling to pay their bills and two-thirds of our jobs pay less than $20 an hour. That's why we're out here today. That's why I'm here fighting with workers to make sure we raise the wage in our state to give islands a better economic opportunity for their families and for our communities. Why are events like this important? They're important to make sure that we raise awareness of the struggles of everyday Iowans in our communities. Uh, that's what this fight is about. It's not about, it's, it's about the corporate takeover of our economy and we need to hold corporations accountable and make sure that workers have a fair shot at their fair share of the profits. That's what this is about. When we have CEOs making hundreds of thousands of dollars and workers with families making less than $8.50 an hour, there is a major problem and that's what this fight is about is reversing that trend and giving workers a lift up. Okay, thank you. You bet, thank you.